Look at me, I'm dancing! Today, we're making foam flock. I'd like to apologize for the dancing that you've just seen. Welcome back and it's great to have you here. So, flock, it's absolutely fantastic for boards, bases, and terrain, but at 25 bucks a color, that's a bit rich for my liking, because I am a bit of a cheapskate when it comes to that sort of stuff. So, I have a way to make just as much flock for just seven dollars. That is the weirdest looking seven I've ever seen. Seven. Ha! And hey, if this is your first time here, here's what's up. If you want to improve your wargaming, make your tabletop battles more epic, and give your wargaming budget more power, then make sure that you smash the subscribe button below and ding the bell. That way you won't miss anything. Now, let's get cracked on into making this flock. Okay, so here's what we're going to need to make our flock. First of all, we need some florist's foam that is the wet kind, not the dry kind, because that's closer to polystyrene. This stuff works great. I have left a link in the description to where you can find some of this stuff on eBay if you should so choose to. Otherwise, craft stores generally stock it. You're also going to need some paint to colour it with. I've got a couple of shades of green, and I've also got some white, because we're going to experiment with making some snow flop as well, just to see how, well, how light we can make this foam. And you're gonna need some buckets to collect it in. You're gonna want a grater so that you can, well, shave it into small bits. And we are going to make America great again. Wait, I feel like some other idiot has already said that. Eh, oh well. And you're gonna want some paper to collect your flock on as you are grating it. So, let's get started. Okay, so, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get your florist brick and start and unwrap it and then you'll notice straight away it says it's ideal for fresh cut floral arrangements no that's not going to do at all so we're going to get our pen and we're just going to cross that out and write flock much better now it's ideal for flock see problem solved but in all seriousness we're just going to get our brick and you can cut it into smaller pieces, which I actually am going to do, because otherwise I'm going to crush it while, well, while we grate it. So we're just going to grab our knife, and we're just going to cut a piece off of it. You don't have to do this, but it does make it a bit easier. And it just cuts and snaps off, like that. It's really, really soft, really easy, which is why we're cutting it so that, well, we can handle it a bit better. So depending on the size you want your flock to be, you can either use the small bits of the grater or the big bits. I'm going to use the small bits because I want it to be really fine. So we just grab it and as you can see I've already started grating it a bit and you just grate it up. And the last little bit that's in your hand, you can just crush that up with your fingers easily enough. Now this does produce quite a bit of dust, so a paper mask is highly recommended. At the very least, keep your head back, because there's a good chance this stuff's going to give you freaking cancer. So, once you've got it like that, you have a nice pile of fluffy stuff. And we're going to take this fluffy stuff, and a container, not that one, because it's got a crack in the bottom. One that will hold water is preferable, and we're just going to take a whole bunch of our fluffy stuff and dump it into this container. And by a whole bunch of it, I mean that entire bit we just shaved up. Like so. So now we want to add our color to it. So I think for this lot, I'm going to, um, yeah, let's go with our lighter green. And with that, we're just going to pour a tiny bit of it in. Like about that much. Then you want to grab something for stirring. I'm using the end of this crummy old brush and just kind of start mixing it in. Okay, right, so that's mixed in now, and as you can see, it's very, very wet looking. Well, you probably can't see it, but I mean, 
it's very, very wet. So we're going to get that other bit of foam that we cut off, and we're going to grate that straight into it, doubling the amount of foam in there, and it should soak up some of the paint. So once you've grated a bit more of that in, stir it in, and then just keep stirring until it goes in. Well, just keep stirring until it kind of looks a bit drier. Because this foam is going to soak up quite a bit of paint. Okay, so once you have it at this point where the colour's fairly well blended through, this is the messy bit. You want to take your hands and you just want to squish it so that any of the clumps like this, which are kind of balls of paint mostly, are just broken up and pressed through so that it all comes out nice and even. And when you're smashing it between your fingers just to mix it through a bit more thoroughly, if you're finding that there is still a bit too much paint in there, you can always add more foam into it to soak that paint up. But that feels pretty good. I think I actually might add a little bit more foam to that, but you don't need to say that. Yeah, I'm going to add a bit more foam to that, then we're just going to leave it aside to set, possibly overnight depending on how long it takes, and then We'll be back to see what the results are like when it's done. Bam! So now our flock has had a chance to set and it's come up pretty good. At least these two have. So this is actually about three days later now because the white, no matter how many coats I put on, and this is about five coats now, it's still not white. It's kind of grey, which is extremely disappointing. However, these two came out really nice. We've got a light green and we've got a dark green and you can see clearer pictures right now. And as you can see in these pictures, the grain is also really nice on both of them. And it, well, you probably can't feel it because it's, it's video, but it's really soft and it has a nice feel to it. Much nicer than sawdust flock does. And given how much cheaper it is than commercial flock, I think it's definitely worth the time at least for these two. The amount of time I had to put into the white and it's still not even white was too much for it to be worth it. So I, I'm going to experiment with a couple of other ideas for white flock, but this does not work for white. Greens, it's fantastic. The problem I ran into was that because of the dark colour of the wet florist foam, it, it just t doesn't take white paint and you need to put so much into it um, that it's either going to turn into like paste <laughs> if you try to do it in one coat or you're going to have to put five, six coats and even then it comes up grey, not really white, which is disappointing. Although given that this is very light it might work if you're doing like wet snow where it's mixed in with some PVA and some white paint to create a wet snow effect might be good for that, but if you're just going to sprinkle it down for snow, not really going to work. These two will work fantastic for grass though. So let's wrap this up. So there you go. That's how you can make yourself some cheap foam flock and with the white being the exception, it came out pretty good for the dark and light green. I reckon we could have gone for a kind of greeny yellow as well to give some burnt grass and that would have come up quite nice as well. The big problem that we ran into with the white was that of course we were starting with such a dark base colour, the amount of white you have to put on it just to get it to lighten up is ridiculous and I mean I put five coats of white paint through that flock and it still didn't come up white. So if you're going for a grey kind of gravelly kind of texture it works really good because that was the other problem with the sheer amount of paint. It kind of took away from the foam and it ended up feeling a little bit like sand just because the paint made it really really hard which was not not really the effect I was going for. So for snow this isn't the best idea but for grass it works fine just fine and even for the white it came up with a much nicer texture than what i've gotten off sawdust in the past so if you have any suggestions for any cost effective ways to make flock please chuck it in the comment section below along with any video ideas you'd like us to cover and if you like this video please give a thumbs up so we know that you like it so we can keep making stuff that you like 
And as always, if you want to improve your wargaming, make your tabletop battles more epic, and give your wargaming budget more power, then be sure to smash the crosshair and ding the bell. You'll subscribe and I'll be able to share with you more battle reports, terrain tutorials, and strategies to make your wargaming experience more epic. And I'll see you next time.